astronomers predict that for the first time in over 70 years, a massive devil comet is going to fly past Earth. The creation of two horns, composed of gas and ice, gave rise to the comet's popular name, 12P Pons Brooks. The comet has been exceptionally bright in comparison to other comets, as experts report on ABC News. Next year, anyone with binoculars or even the unaided eye will be able to witness the comet sail across the sky. What gives it the name Devil Comet? Dust, ice, frozen gases, and boulders that were linked together during the solar system's formation make up comets. Usually, they gradually get warmer and brighter as they approach the sun. The classic comet tail is formed as the ice transforms into gas and pushes the dust away. On the other hand, 12P Ponce Brooks has been experiencing massive brightness increases due to two significant eruptions, one in July 2023 and the other earlier this month. Dr. Theodore Carreda, a postdoctoral researcher at the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, told ABC News that these outbursts have brought this object from being dim enough that you can only really see it with big professional telescopes. In the majority of cases, it's something people can see from their backyard. There are very few comets with significant outbursts, sudden spikes in brightness and even fewer that experience them more than once during an orbit. He went on, It appears that Ponce Brooks is just really active. The comet known by its nickname, 12P Ponce Brooks's Coma, is the fuzzy cloud around the comet's nucleus. It has an odd shape with two devil horns on it. It will be interesting to observe whether 12P Ponce Brooks has additional eruptions over the coming months and whether they produce the same devil horns that are currently visible, according to Dr. Elliot Herman, a retired professor at the University of Arizona and amateur astronomer who has taken pictures of the comet using a remote telescope. When is it going to cross Earth? The comet is normally invisible, but on April 8, 2024, a total solar eclipse that crosses over Mexico, the U.S., and Canada may make it visible. If there are no clouds, it may be incredibly brilliant during that occurrence and visible with binoculars or the unaided eye. On April 21, 2024, at around the same time, 12 Obu P. Pons Brooks will be at perihelion, or the point in its orbit where it is closest to the sun. The comet will then have another chance to be seen by scientists and the general public on June 2nd, when 12P Pons Brooks will make its closest approach to Earth. Do we need to worry? Jean-Louis Pons made the initial discovery of 12P Pons Brooks in 1812, and William Robert Brooks made a second sighting of it in 1883. Given that it is a comet of the Halley type, its orbital period is estimated to be between 20 and 200 years. Every 71 years, 12P Pons Brooks makes a pass by Earth. This means that the last time anyone really observed this thing was in 1954, Carreta stated. Therefore, this contributes to the fact that this hasn't been well known. Additionally, when individuals last observed it, they used binoculars, photographic plates, and their own eyes. Its diameter, according to scientific estimates, is at least 17 kilometers, or 10.55 miles. Experts claim that despite its frightening designation and size, 12P Pons Brooks is not a threat to people. According to Herrmann, there is a unique chance to view a celestial body during this occurrence. People have historically looked up at the sky since humanity first became self-aware, and being amazed at the events that occur above us, is something that goes back far before civilization, he stated. I believe that everyone is impacted by the sky occurrences in a very historic way. The cosmos is vast, and there are countless incredible things happening all around us. It's worthwhile to go outside and simply take in the breathtaking scenery. Which further objects will probably pass Earth by in the future? According to a recent article, Earth may someday be impacted by an asteroid that NASA has been following for almost 25 years. 
The OSIRIS-REx science team estimates that Bennu, a near-Earth asteroid that was first spotted in 1999, may drift into the planet's orbit and strike it by September 2182. According to astronomers cited in the Science Direct report, Bennu passes close to Earth every six years and has made three close encounters with the planet in 1999, 2005, and 2011. According to astronomers, there is a 0.0037%, or 1 in 2,700, probability that Bennu will collide with Earth by 2,182. The Origins Spectral Interpretation Resource Identification and Security Regolith Explorer, or OSIRIS-REx, made a fleeting surface contact with Bennu in October 2020 before launching off the asteroid. On Sunday, the first sample of an asteroid from OSIRIS-REx to be recovered in space touched down on Earth, tumbling to a stop near Utah. According to astronomer Hakim Oluyesi of ABC News, OSIRIS-REx will alter our understanding of the solar system's beginnings. This material is clean and unadulterated, unveiling secrets of the early solar system. Finding biological molecules, or perhaps the building blocks of life, is a long-shot discovery. For NASA, it was the first mission of its kind. According to IFL Science, if Bennu were to strike Earth, 1,200 megatons of energy would be released, which is 24 times more energy than the majority of nuclear weapons. Scientists discovered in 2019 that the asteroid that wiped off the dinosaurs had a power equivalent to 10 billion atomic bombs. Massive rock fragments that scientists discovered provided proof that the asteroid was powerful enough to cause tsunamis, wildfires, and so much dust in the atmosphere that it obscured the sun. Comet Kushida, 144p. The Northern Hemisphere will have excellent viewing conditions in January 2024 for Comet 144P Kushida. The greatest times to view the comet with a telescope or binoculars were from January 28th to early February 1st to 18th. Beginning in January 2024, the comet travels from southern Aries to the end, passing near the Hyades in Taurus. The only thing predictable about comets, as has been noted many times, is how unpredictable they can be. Upon discovering Comet Kohotek at a distance of extraordinarily far from the Sun, close to Jupiter's orbit but not the planet itself, speculation was that it was a giant among comets that would eventually become exceedingly luminous. Forecasts of brightness reached magnitude, 10, or as brilliant as the first or last quarter moon. At the Central Bureau for Astronomical Telegrams, Dr. Brian Marsden declared that this might be the comet of the century. Taking him at his word, the mainstream media exaggerated the approach of a comet that might possibly be seen during the day. The Earth was ready for a spectacular display of starlight. However, Kohutek was significantly fainter than initially predicted and quite typical as far as comets visible to the unaided eye are concerned. Because it was low to the horizon and somewhat obscured by light pollution, the majority of people missed it completely. The public blamed both the news media and astronomers, and there were bitter accusations between them, originally recognized as an asteroid, the comet in question is C2023A3, Tsuchinshan Atlas, which was found in South Africa on February 22nd by the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, ATLAS. The robotic early warning system ATLAS was created especially to find near-Earth asteroids a few weeks to days before they could potentially harm Earth, it was eventually discovered that the item, which was initially believed to be an asteroid, had actually been photographed six weeks earlier by the Purple Mountain Observatory, Tsuchinshan, which is located east of Nanjing, China. Later, on December 22nd, photos of it were taken by Palomar Observatory's Zwicky Transient Facility, ZTF. It was also clear from these photos that the object was a comet rather than an asteroid due to its short tail and highly compacted coma. If it fizzles, will it sizzle? 
Upon its first discovery in the serpent's constellation, Comet Tsuchinshan Atlas was a remarkably weak object with an 18th magnitude, situated approximately 680 million miles or 1.09 billion kilometers away from the Sun. But on September 27, 2024, when it approaches its perihelion, or closest point to the Sun, that distance will have decreased to 36 million miles, or close to Mercury's orbit. A comet's intrinsic brightness would normally increase by 17 magnitudes in response to such a massive change in solar distance. Moreover, roughly two weeks after perihelion, Suchin Shan Atlas will make a rather close flyby over Earth. However, can this comet really turn into a heavenly spectacle, or will it turn out to be as unsuccessful as Kohutek was in 1973-74? The unpredictable nature of comet appearance and brightness is nothing new to those who study these mysterious objects. What we see in the end will rely on a number of factors, including the comet's orbit, its relative positions to the Sun and Earth, and the size and makeup of the frozen nucleus of the comet, which is typically only a few kilometers across. Its stony, dusty composition and frozen gases are similar to those found in Saturn's rings. Over the course of more than a century, astronomers have created broad formulas and models for calculating comet brightness based on observations of literally hundreds of them. However, comets have unique characteristics much like humans do. The best viewing of Comet Tsuchinshan Atlas should occur in 2024, between October 12th, when it will pass closest to Earth at a distance of 44 million miles, 71 million kilometer, and October 19th, when it will appear low in the west-southwest evening sky from 1 to 3 hours after sunset, if all goes according to the most optimistic predictions. Despite its low altitude and brilliant moonlight, it may appear as bright as a first or second magnitude star during that period. Sadly, the full moon falls on October 17th. It may also exhibit a sizable tail. It is therefore quite potential for Suchinshan Atlas to grow into a bright comet, as I want to emphasize. There is a significant obstacle in the way of that happening, though. According to the most recent orbital calculations, Tsuchinshan Atlas is leaving the Oort cloud directly and is orbiting in a parabolic orbit with an eccentricity of 102280. Thus, it has never before passed close to the Sun. And that's unfortunate. Tsuchinshan Atlas's surface is probably covered with extremely volatile substances, including carbon dioxide, frozen nitrogen, and carbon monoxide, if the traits displayed by other Oort comets also apply to it. These ices evaporate at great distances from the sun, causing a comet in the distance to briefly become brighter, which in turn creates erroneous expectations. However, if the most recent calculations were correct, and Suchinshan Atlas was indeed returning to the Sun after a long period of time in an elliptical orbit, its highly volatile material coating would have already been shed, revealing the true underlying level of activity that we are currently witnessing. Orbital data revealed that comet Hale-Bopp was moving in an elliptical orbit with a period of about 4,200 years, when it was still quite far from the Sun. So that's it for today's video. If enjoyed the video, please leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Click the upcoming video on your screen for more insights.